there are a lot of books out there about entrepreneurship. You say they don't give you what you need when you're really in the trenches. What do they not have that your book does? Well, I think one of the things for an entrepreneur is these books that are out there today, they just try and lionize what happened to other folks. And they walk through their lives and what happened and how they built their businesses and personally. What we're trying to do is demystify what happens in entrepreneurship. We're trying to get advice from the best entrepreneurs in the world, gathering all that advice in one place, and it's basically the field guide that I wish I had had when we started Okta 13 years ago. You open with a story about Okta revenue flatlining in 2011. You're going into a board meeting, you think you're going to get fired and that the company is done. Instead, Ben Horowitz, one of your investors, calls you and instead of firing you, he gives you some advice. What did he tell you that enabled you to turn the company around? That's a great example of some of the actionable advice that I think too often doesn't get shared with entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs think that everything's a perfect journey and when they look from the outside, all these companies are destined for glory. As you said, in 2011, Okta Revenue basically flatlined and Ben called and said a couple things. He said, first of all, you need to get help and you need to hire leaders who have done this kind of thing before. And second of all, he said, you need to keep the main thing the main thing. In our case, it was focusing on the right go-to-market segment and pivoting to much larger organizations that actually have serious identity management opportunities and problems. So it's Octa's five-year anniversary, actually, this month, I believe, and it's been an incredible ride. Shares have gone way up. More recently, they've come a bit down from mm -hmm. their peak. What is the hardest lesson you've learned in the five years since going public? I think uh, keeping a view on where you're going in the long term and reminding employees that we're building something that's important in a big market that matters to many people. So if you pay attention too much to the stock on a day-to-day -day basis, you might feel as though you're not sure you're focused on the right things. But if you take the long view, look, we're in markets that are worth $80 billion. The company's a billion and a half in revenue, growing 50% year over year. And we've set very clear benchmarks for FY26 of $4 billion of revenue uh, with 20% FCF margins. If you keep a good view on that long-term perspective, I think we're going to be in great shape. I'm sure you've learned a few lessons from the hack. And Todd, your CEO and co-founder, was recently on the show to talk about what happened. Take a quick listen to what he had to say. We are a trusted brand, and that trust has been damaged. And we do take accountability for all the mistakes we've made. And we have made mistakes. And one of them, as you mentioned, is the communication was not as clear as it should have been. What's the lesson here? Well, there's a number of lessons. First of all, as the global leader in identity, uh, we realize now and appreciate what critical infrastructure Okta is for our customers. And look, we take all security events very seriously. Uh, there's two things I want to clarify. First of all, the Okta service was not breached. Second of all, the Okta product did what it was supposed to do uh, and actually prevented a major breach from happening. There's a number of things that we've learned here. I think, first of all, from a technology perspective, we need to take, uh, make sure that our third-party partners are held accountable to the same standards we are. And then secondly, we have to improve communication. Look, we're a trusted brand, as Todd said, and our customers rely on us for communication and trust when it comes to the platform, what we say, and how we communicate with them. And that's paramount. So great learning opportunity for us, and things will certainly do better in the future. How much harder will security and identity management be in Web3? And what is Okta's play there? Yeah, well, Web3 obviously is exciting. It's a combination of both decentralization and modern advanced technology. Look, I think, frankly, identity could be a game changer on the blockchain. Think about you and I as consumers, information like health and credit. These are things that we should own and make sure the right people have access, not entrust them to third-party credit agencies who have breaches like we saw a couple years ago. The, the challenge and the opportunity in Web3, of course, is this is not just cutting-edge technology. This is bleeding-edge technology, and we really have to move it forward become, before it becomes mainstream. Elon Musk making a play for Twitter. Yeah. What do you think? I think it's very exciting as an entrepreneur. I mean, Elon Musk's track record stands uh, for itself. Uh, I think this is an undervalued asset in Twitter. You compare it to Facebook, Meta, which is a graph of the people you know. It's important, but Twitter has a lot more critical information on what you care about and what you can follow. Now, I do think he's shaken things up. Clearly, I think there's an opportunity for that board to be more involved in governance. But I think this might be Elon's uh, Rupert Murdoch moment. If you think back to 1976 when Rupert Murdoch bought the New York Post, it gave him that first voice into broad media and communications. And I think that's what you're seeing right now with Elon. Interesting, though he's unpredictable on any given day. Does that concern you? It, it, look, at the end of the day, Twitter is a huge megaphone for him. I mean, he has 82 million followers. 
Uh, it's clearly an underperforming asset. The S&P 500 has outperformed the Twitter stock over the last decade by a factor of two to one. And frankly, there's a lot he could do with the business. If you separate out that technology business from the media part, you open source who can have access to that information, the question of moderation goes away. Let the capital markets decide how much moderation people want on their version of Twitter. Well, uh, in a not unlike Elon Musk move, you actually have another company that's focused on the brain, um, focused on curing brain disease. Can yep. you talk to us a little bit about this? Yes, uh, it's a great company called Herophilus uh, that we have 45 folks based here in San Francisco. Uh, we are focused on uh, AI-empowered neurotherapeutics trying to cure central nervous system disease. Uh, two major ones that we have breakthroughs on are Alzheimer's and Rett syndrome that are going into the clinic soon, and it's something I'm very excited about.